Good morning, and welcome to Morning Prayer for Wednesday, May 26th. Both here and in all your churches throughout the world, we adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Amen. Day 26, the second note continued. Therefore, we seek to love all those to whom we are bound by ties of family or friendship. Our love for them increases as their love for Christ grows deeper. We have a special love and affection for members of the Third Order, praying for each other individually and seeking to grow in that love. We are on our guard against anything which might injure this love, and we seek reconciliation with those from whom we are estranged. We seek the same love for those with whom we have little natural affinity, for this kind of love is not a welling up of emotion, but is a bond founded in our common union with Christ. Merciful God, you have made your church rich through the poverty of blessed Francis. Help us, like him, not to trust in earthly things, but to seek your heavenly gifts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is in his holy temple. O come, let us worship. The Jubilate Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this. The Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 38. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me in your wrath. For your arrows have already pierced me, and your hand presses hard upon me. There is no health in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no soundness in my body because of my sin. For my iniquities overwhelm me. Like a heavy burden, they are too much for me to bear. My wounds stink and fester by reason of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and prostrate, I go about in mourning all the day long. My loins are filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. I am utterly numb and crushed. I wail because of the groaning of my heart. O Lord, you know all my desires, and my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart is pounding, my strength has failed me, and the brightness of my eyes has gone from me. My friends and companions draw back from my affliction. My neighbors stand afar off. Those who seek after my life lay snares for me. Those who strive to hurt me speak of my ruin and plot treachery all the day long. But I am like the deaf who do not hear, like those who are mute and do not open their mouth. I have become like one who does not hear and from whose mouth comes no defense. For in you, O Lord, have I fixed my hope. You will answer me, O Lord my God, for I said, Do not let them rejoice at my expense, those who gloat over me when my foot slips. Truly, I am on the verge of falling, and my pain is always with me. I will confess my iniquity and be sorry for my sin. Those who are my enemies without cause are mighty, and many in number are those who wrongfully hate me. Those who repay evil for good slander me, because I follow the course that is right. O Lord, do not forsake me. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. God of compassion, when we are weighed down by the burden of our sins, help us to remember that you do not forsake us, but show mercy through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him, and a ring on his finger, and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <coughs> Let us offer our prayers to the source of all love and all life, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the Church throughout the world. We pray for the Anglican Church across the world, the Anglican Communion, for the Anglican Church of Canada, 
the province of Rupert's Land, the Diocese of Brandon, and this parish of St. Matthew. Merciful Lord, we pray for all who call themselves Christians, that we may become a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to the praise of Christ Jesus our Savior. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for William, our bishop, for Larry, our assisting bishop, for Greg, our metropolitan, for Mark, our national indigenous archbishop, for Linda, our primate, and for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and for all bishops and other ministers, that they may remain faithful to their calling and rightly proclaim the word of truth. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations, for our acting Governor-General, our Prime Minister and members of Parliament, our Premier and members of the Legislature, our Mayor and Council, and all in authority, that your people may lead quiet and peaceable lives. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for this city and those who live here, the poor and the rich, the elderly and the young, men and women, that you will show your goodwill to all. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray today for those who will feel the effects of systemic racism, prejudice, poverty, or homelessness. We give thanks for those who work with the marginalized. We pray for our first responders, our doctors, nurses, and medical technicians, for social workers and mental health workers, for researchers and scientists. In this community, we give thanks for 7th Street Access, Samaritan House, Helping Hands, and the Bear Clan. We pray for the victims of our society and those who minister to them, that you will be their help and defense. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those preparing for baptism, confirmation, or ordination, that they may be strengthened in the faith. Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints who have found favor in your sight from earliest times, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and those whose names are known to you alone. And we pray that we too may be counted among your faithful witnesses. Lord, hear our prayer. In our prayers for the Third Order, we pray this morning for the province of the Americas, for South America, for Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and Guiana. And we pray for our Dean, Mary, Bruno, Bernard, Antonio, Victoria, Ivan, Candida, Esther, Judy, Bob, Becky, Beth, Kara, Holly, John, Mercurio, Jill, Carol, and Butch. And we pray for our companions, Eve, Magnus, and Stephen. God, we give you thanks for the Third Order of the Society of St. Francis. Grant, we pray, that being knit together in community and prayer, we, your servants, may glorify your holy name after the example of St. Francis and win others to your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Collect Almighty and ever-living God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of eternal life. Keep us in the unity of your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May our Blessed Lady pray for us. May St. Francis pray for us. May St. Clara pray for us. May all the saints of the Third Order pray for us. May all the holy angels watch over us and befriend us. May our Lord Jesus give us his blessing and his peace. Amen.